Today I'm going to show you how I built this sauna with absolutely no experience. And I am not joking. Prior to this build, all I had ever made were some herb drying racks, and even those I messed up. So I was definitely intimidated before I started this build. But eventually the pain of just not trying something that I really wanted to do outweighed the fear of completely messing it up and I just jumped right in. I found an article online outlining how to make a small 4x5 sauna and I tailored it to my desires because I didn't want to have any plywood or house wrap or any glues or any kind of nasty materials like that inside a sauna that I was heating up to almost 200 degrees. So I definitely made some mistakes here and there, but for the most part, it's a really functional sauna that I can get up to 170 degrees. So hopefully I inspire you all to attempt your own sauna build. Let's get started. Site selection is so important. I wish that I had just spent one rainy day at the spot I picked out for my sauna before building it because it turns out what I thought was a deer trail is an intermittent drainage and while it's fine for now, the cinder blocks I have it on raise it up enough above the water level, I might have to move it in the future. The footprint of the sauna is 4 feet by 5 feet, so I stuck sticks in the ground to mark that measurement, and then I dug holes 18 inches in circumference to accommodate the 16 inch long cement blocks that I used as footings. I then gathered buckets of gravel from our stream to fill the holes. Most people use pressure treated wood as their floor base to resist rot and insects, but the chemical used to preserve the wood contains arsenic, so I decided to shusugi bond the wood instead. For those of you who aren't familiar, it is a Japanese technique that involves charring wood to make it weatherproof. A lot of directions out there use propane torches, but I figured to try it out with a fire. It seemed to work well, although it is time consuming. It took me a couple of hours to do four 2x4s. I'll definitely do an update video a year or so down the line to see how it fares. Next, I made sure all the concrete blocks were level, which took a good bit of fussing. Here I am assembling the inner floor frame with equally spaced support boards. The inner frame goes inside the outer frame and sticks up an inch and a half from the top edge of the outer frame. And if you measured the inner dimension of the outer frame well, it should fit pretty snug, but I still used some scraps to support it until I could screw it in. The plans I followed said to use plywood for the floor, but I decided to use deck boards instead. 
I didn't cut them quite the right length, so I used a handsaw to trim them up instead of hiking them all the way back down to the house. And that worked pretty well. It's a handy tool to have around. Next step is assembling the walls, and I decided to tackle the side walls first. Because it's a shed roof, you have to cut 15 degree angles at the ends of your 2x4s. All of the angles were definitely a hard concept for me to wrap my head around at first, but I just followed the directions closely, and even though there was some good head scratching, I figured it out in the end. In order to equally space the wall studs, I took the inner measurement, subtracted the width of all of the studs, and then divided that by four. That number was my spacing between the studs. Again, the directions I followed said to use plywood siding, so instead I chose board and batten. In order to have something to nail the boards and battens to, you need horizontal furring strips. I used 1x2s. I fastened the boards with two and a quarter inch stainless steel screws so that they wouldn't leave rust stains over time. Here I am pre-drilling the holes because the battens and furring strips are so narrow they would likely split without pre-drilling. Next up is the back wall. I did use my boyfriend's help with this one because it involved ripping a 2x4 with a 15 degree angle with a table saw. I figured since I was still getting comfortable using power tools, it was probably best to hold off using the most dangerous tool in the shop for now. The benches will go on the back wall, so it's important to screw bracing between the studs in which to screw your benches to. 
I had a hard time visualizing how high up to put my benches, but I settled with 36 inches and it's the perfect height. The plans I was following have two rows of benches on the back wall, but at the last minute I decided to put one row on the back wall and one row on the side wall opposite the wood stove, and I much prefer this design. When you are screwing the battens onto the boards of the front wall, make sure to leave the battens above the door off until you install the door trim, otherwise there would be a giant gap between the siding and the trim. Here I'm screwing 1x4 trim around the door and also inside of the door frame. Next comes the trim on the corners, which consists of two 1x4s on either wall butted up together. I assembled them first to make sure they were even on the walls. 
Because I didn't want to rip a board for my front siding, I ended up leaving a little gap on either end of my front wall because I knew I'd be covering it up with trim anyways. Well, that gap was a little larger than I was expecting, and the trim just barely covered it up with lots of fussing. Cautionary tale, folks. Take the time to rip that board. Next up is the roof frame. This step was probably the most confusing for me, as the directions were pretty sparse. But I ended up making it work, and the roof doesn't leak, so I consider it a success. I made the roof deck larger than the directions in order to accommodate for a longer overhang so that I wouldn't have to cut the 8 foot roof panels. Plus I get to have a covered deck. Because I did the board and batten siding and that made my building wider than in the plans I was following, there wasn't much more than 2 inches of overhang on either side, but it suffices. Here I'm using butyl sealant tape, a sort of expanding soft foam that is sticky on one side. It is used to seal gaps to prevent wind-driven leaks. I highly recommend putting it on the roof deck before you put the roof panels on, because the way I did it here was very difficult. I'm using self-tapping roofing screws to attach the roof panels to the deck. They have a little rubber washer that prevents leaking. I used one and a half inch long screws and I wish I had used three quarter inch because the roof deck boards I used are only about three quarter inches thick and the one and a half inch length sticks out. The roof frame essentially acts as a base for the roof deck. It doesn't sit on top of the walls as I expected, it instead sits on the inside of the walls and the roof deck boards sit on top of the walls. Now for the trim around the edges of the roof. On the sides, I had to sandwich a 1x2 strip between the roof edge and the trim because there wasn't quite enough space for the trim to make contact with the roof deck edge.
Here I am finishing up the inside of the sauna with cedar tongue and groove, three and a half inch wide by eight foot long boards. It's not cheap, but it smells so good and adds a very nice touch. That was one pro to building a smaller sauna. I could afford nicer building materials because I didn't need that many. I wasn't really sure how to measure the sidewall boards since they have that 15 degree angle, but I just ended up lining up some shorter boards that I had cut for the ceiling and measuring how many inches the tall side of the angle was from the ceiling. I use tiny little stainless steel trim screws, which is important for cedar because over time other metal can stain the cedar. I got lucky with the floor and was able to fit an exact number of hole boards, but for the walls and ceiling I had to rip them by hand, which went pretty quick because the boards are only a quarter inch thick. Something I had to learn the hard way is that the angles of the two sidewalls are mirror images to each other, so once you cut the 15 degree angle, the cedar boards will fit on either side by flipping them around, but then you change the side of the tongue or groove, so you have to keep that angle in mind when you are cutting if you want them to all fit together. The website whose plan I was following also had directions for making a door using tempered glass cutting boards, 2x4s is the style or frame, and then 2x6s for the horizontal pieces. The only thing is I didn't have a table saw, but I realized I could buy a table saw for less than I could buy a glass sauna door, so I went for it. Sure, I could have built a more basic all wood door, but I'm glad I went with the glass because it makes the space feel bigger and provides natural light and a beautiful view of the forest. Basically. You are running dados along the length of the boards, thick enough to fit the glass cutting boards into, and then connecting them with tiny pieces of wood called spines, and gluing it all together. I was definitely hesitant to use glue at first for fear of off-gassing, but there's this great website called mychemicalfreehouse.net, and it has an article about non-toxic wood glue, so I was able to feel better about using Elmer's brand of wood glue. When it came to putting the hinges on the door, I got pretty discouraged. I wasn't aware that the standard is to make a recess in the door so that the hinge is flush with the door and it closes tighter. I tried using a chisel on a scrap piece of wood and failed miserably, so I bought a door hinge jig by Ryobi to guide a router and it worked so well. I would highly recommend using it. I'll link to all the stuff that was useful to me in the description. The only thing with the jig is that it doesn't work on anything thicker than a 2x4, so I wasn't able to recess the hinge on the frame, but it doesn't leave that big of a gap, so it's totally fine. Plus, the doorstop trim that I'm installing here helps to hide the gaps. When we used a jigsaw to start cutting the chimney hole out, it bounced against the studs in the wall, which were closer together than I had remembered. The thing is, the plan I followed used an electric heater, which doesn't need to accommodate a chimney. I did not anticipate the issue with fitting a chimney through the studs, but very luckily I was able to just fit the chimney between the two studs with shaving down the studs a tad bit. I was a little worried that the chimney would get hot and burn the sauna down without the required half inch clearance in the wall but it barely even gets warm with all the insulation between the chimney walls. 
If you end up putting a wood stove in a tiny sauna like this, I would definitely recommend putting the chimney through the roof. Because I made such a teeny sauna, all the chimney pieces didn't fit, but luckily I was able to just leave some sections out and it seems to function perfectly fine. Here I am thinking that the bracket that holds the chimney to the wall will just easily slip right over the chimney, but silly me, I actually needed a couple of metric wrenches to loosen those nuts. When installing the chimney, don't forget to make sure it is level, which is a lot easier with two sets of hands. Next, the wall cover plates weren't as easy to install on the outside since I had to cut the battens so the plates would be flush with the wall. The cedar benches are quite simple. The decking boards rest on 2x2 nailing cleats screwed to the frame. The directions call for 1x6 cedar boards, but I could only find 2x4s, and those work just the same. Nail the boards in with stainless steel finish nails and use a nail set to hammer the nail in the last quarter inch or so as to not dent the wood. You may choose to buy the box of sauna rocks, but since I live on an island with nothing but rocks, I couldn't bring myself to do that. Granite works well because it isn't prone to exploding. But whatever you do, don't use river rocks because the thermal shock can cause them to explode. Just a few finishing touches now and it's done. Thanks so much for watching, and certainly let me know if you have any questions below. I'm happy to help in any way I can. Good luck!